Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we're looking at the Intel Core i7-2700K Sandy Bridge CPU. This is Intel's flagship model of the premium processors. The box is standard of course. In there is the Core i7-2700K CPU which uses the LGA 1155 socket. On the side of the box you get lots of information on what this processor has to offer. On the back of the box you get some more information in different languages. On top you can see the CPU itself through the window. Now this is what's in the box. You get a little booklet from Intel telling you more about their Core i7 processors. On the back is the sticker. Then you of course get Intel stock cooler. Thermal paste comes reapplied. And lastly you get the CPU itself protected of course. This is what it looks like when the CPU is installed here on the Asus PAC68-V Pro slash Gen 3 motherboard. Time for the specifications. The Intel Core i7-2700K is a quad-core Sandy Bridge CPU with a 3.5 GHz base clock and a turbo clock of 3.9 GHz. 95 Watt TDP and uses the 32 nanometer architecture. It has 1 MB of level 2 cache and 8 MB of level 3 cache. It supports dual channel memory and supports DDR3-1333 natively. Here in CPU-Z you can see the specs once again. I must admit they look very nice. Ultra low voltages as you can see and on idle you will even see the voltage go below 1. The CPU features the latest instructions such as SSE 4.1 and 4.2. And the core clock will not go below 1.6 GHz when on idle. On load it will go all the way up to a 3.9 GHz when turbo is enabled. Also the 2700K is fully unlocked and should overclock easily. 9 MB of total cache and the CPU has 4 physical cores and 8 threads. This is where Intel's hyper threading technology kicks in. So these 8 threads will run as 8 virtual cores making the CPU work like an 8 core processor while being a quad core and saving energy. So all in all very impressive. Like I mentioned before I'm using the Asus PHC68-V Pro slash Gen 3 motherboard. At the time of this video I'm using the latest BIOS version for this board. I've also installed an 8GB kit of DDR3 2000 memory running in dual channel at 1866MHz. Time for benchmarks. This is the test system I'm using today. First is 3D Mark Vantage at performance preset of course and obviously the scores go all the way up to 26485 which is massive. The CPU feels like a beast honestly but now let's move on to 3D Mark 11 at the performance preset. And as you can see my 3D Mark 11 score is P4114, amazing score. Of course it's the total score with graphics test included but the CPU itself also did a great job here since this benchmark tends to push systems to their limits. In 3D Mark 06 at default settings the CPU scored 7477. There's absolutely nothing to complain here. It's a fairly high score. Time to test out some serious rendering with Cinebench release 11.5 and of course the 2700K didn't disappoint me with 7.59 points. There's only one word I can say. Amazing. Now what could I say about the memory controller? In ADA 64 cache and memory benchmark I got mind blowing results. The memory transfer speeds go up to the 20,000s and the latency is very low which is better. The cache transfer speeds are just amazing as well. The level 3 cache has mind blowing speeds and the latency with only 4.9 nanoseconds. Unbelievable. Let's move on to Super Pi and start 1 million calculations and guess what? The CPU finished in just 9.656 seconds. I'm speechless. In W Prime benchmark 32 million integers, the CPU was done in just 7.271 seconds. So far there was absolutely nothing to complain. Massive performance. But now let's try out some games like Dirt 3 and Battlefield 3. In Dirt 3 at 680 by 1050 on ultra high settings the average frame rate is 65 FPS and 54 for minimum. So that's totally playable. The CPU doesn't get near the limit when it comes to games but the graphics card does in Battlefield 3 for example with 44 FPS on average, 31 on minimum and 62 FPS at max. Of course I was testing it at maxed out settings so basically ultra high settings. Once I lower the AA it plays just fine for my taste. 
I need at least 50 to 60 FPS when playing games. But once again, it's not the 2700K that gets to the limits, it's the Nvidia GTX 560 graphics card. Now let's take a look at the temperatures. I'm using the Cooler Master V6 GT aftermarket CPU cooler, so temperatures will be lower than with the stock heatsink that came with the CPU. On idle I get 27 degrees Celsius, which are 81 degrees Fahrenheit, but most of the time it's around 40 degrees Celsius. On load the temperatures go all the way up to 65 degrees Celsius, which are 149 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, it gets that high, but it's normal if you reach into the 70s with the stock heatsink. My ambient room temperature was 20 degrees Celsius, which are 68 degrees Fahrenheit when I ran the tests. The Intel Core i7 2700K CPU is definitely a great choice if you need massive performance for the price. This CPU is pure perfection and has no cons at all. There's absolutely nothing at all. The power consumption is so low that it's almost unbelievable with just 70 watts on idle. The whole machine. But not just in idle, you get to see the same effect on load. I'm speechless, honestly. Pure perfection of a CPU. Pros for a CPU are massive performance in every single application and game. It supports high frequency memory modules and makes use of it all. Then it's fully unlocked and has an ultra low power consumption. For cons there's nothing to say at all. I give it a 10 out of 10 and definitely recommend that beast of a CPU. Thanks for watching.